Welcome to the Living in a Share House series, where you learn to become a better housemate. In this series, there are four presentations, and this presentation will focus on expectations. Setting the right expectation early on in a tenancy is very important. It sets the ground rules for what to expect from each other. It is recommended that you set time aside in the beginning of your tenancy to meet up with your housemates and discuss your expectations of them and also ask them what their expectations are of you. In a share house, it's best to create an environment that enables all of the housemates to be able to communicate with each other freely. Think of it like a second home. Making it a home and not just a place to stay will greatly add to your experience in a share house. Here's a few tips to remember when living in a share house. Communication in person is always best, much better than leaving notes, text messages and emails. Often in notes, text messages and emails, the tone of your message is harder to express. For example, rent is due on Friday, please pay $200 as soon as possible, can be interpreted in two ways. The person writing the message may think, rent is due on Friday, could you please pay before then so I may pass the full rent to our landlord, ensuring we don't get into trouble, thanks. However, your housemates might interpret the note as, rent is due on Friday and I need to constantly remind you that you need to pay $200 before that day, so pay now. Connecting with your housemates is one of the best ways to make a share house a second home and your housemates your family. Ways to connect with your housemates could be to have a dinner at least once a week together as a household, going out to parties together, going to the movies together, or even going for a run together. Look at what you enjoy doing and ask if your housemate wants to join you. It could work the other way around too, so you can join in on what your housemates enjoy if invited. Understanding cultural differences and respecting them. For example, in some cultures, it's considered very rude to pass items with the left hand. So without knowing this, you might accidentally pass something with your left hand to your housemate and disrespect their culture. To avoid instances like this, make sure to ask about your housemates' cultures during the first meeting and ask them what is considered rude. Also let them know that you are still learning. So if you do mistakenly do something that is considered wrong in their culture, apologize and ask them to help you understand it. Active listening is something that is easier said than done. Sometimes to get along with your housemates is to simply listen to what they're saying. By listening, you will learn many things from your housemates, like what is their preferred style of communication, to better understand their emotions, to even knowing what gifts to get your housemates when it's their birthday, if you choose. A good way to test whether you're listening is to paraphrase or to repeat what your housemate has said back to them before you start talking about your point. This way, you know what you have listened to, what they are saying, and you're also at the same time showing them that you're actively listening. This will help foster good communication. Sort out storage spaces. At the first meeting, it would be ideal to allocate the storage space in the house, kitchen, or even the refrigerator. This way, it's easier to know where your stuff is, know which foods in the fridge are not yours, and provide a bit more privacy as opposed to sharing the same cupboard or shelf. So following the above tips, we also have another list made up by students with things they don't want their housemates to do. Number one, leave the lights on after you've exited the room. It's very annoying. Two, drying the bathroom floor after a shower, leaving the bathroom wet and slippery. Three, gossiping between housemates. Four, loud music and parties without consulting everyone in the house. Five, cutting nails around the house. Please clean up after yourself. Six, having friends over who are loud and inconsiderate. Seven, not taking the rubbish out. Eight, using all of the hot water by showering for too long. Nine, eating other housemates' food without their permission. And 10, a housemate who avoids communicating in person when issues arise and instead leaves notes around the house. 
Now to end off the presentation, let's have a quick recap on what we've covered. Going back to our slogan, to become a better housemate, you should know, number one, communicate in person, please avoid notes. Two, connect with your housemates. Three, understand that there will be difference in culture and please respect everyone. Four, active listening. And number five, allocate suitable storage space. Now don't forget about the 10 things that students have mentioned that they don't want their housemates to do. So if you've forgotten them, feel free to go back and watch it again later. If you do have any questions, please email us at info at accommodation.uq.edu.au. And don't forget about our other videos in this series on finances, people and housekeeping. And that's it for now. Good luck on your journey to becoming a better housemate.